Hey folks, welcome back. We're going to take a look today. Uh, we're going to start a new unit and we are going to dive right into biochemistry. That is the chemistry of life. So we're really going to get into this uh, chemistry today, talk a little bit about how chemistry works, and eventually get to the point where we will be talking about how it applies to life. So first, let's take a look at some of the objectives for today. You should be able to compare and contrast the structure of atoms and compounds. You should also be able to differentiate between different types of chemical bonds and be able to define acids and bases and relate them to certain chemical reactions that occur inside the body and relate them to biology. So let's take a look a little bit about chemistry. First thing we need to know is that there is matter and everything in the universe is made up of matter and matter is made up of atoms. So Everything that you see, everything that you touch, everything that you deal with on a daily basis is matter and is composed of atoms. Even the air we breathe is made up of atoms, nitrogen, uh, oxygen, a little bit of carbon dioxide. That is present in our air, and those are all atoms. So everything that's made up, that makes up the universe is made of matter. And we take individual atoms, like hydrogen and oxygen, and carbon and nitrogen, we can make different compounds by combining them together. This creates compounds, and compounds are just chemicals that are made up of multiple atoms. Things like water, ammonia, carbon dioxide, and methane are all examples of compounds. They're made up of multiple different atoms. If we look deeper inside an atom, we can see there are a lot of different subatomic particles or things that are smaller than atoms existing at the atomic level. The first thing we want to look at is the nucleus, and the nucleus is the center part of the atom. That center part of the atom is very important because it contains protons, which are positively charged, and neutrons, which are neutral charged. And these balance out the electrons that are negatively charged. They exist around the nucleus. So when we look at an atom, we can we can determine that there are three different subatomic particles, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Protons are positively charged, neutrons are neutral, and electrons are negatively charged. The protons and neutrons make up the nucleus, while the electrons surround the nucleus and move around it in a random pattern. Now if you look on a periodic table, you'd see that there are over well over 100 different chemical elements on the periodic table. And so what differentiates one element from another? Well, it's the number of protons. For example, one proton in an atom would indicate that that atom is hydrogen. Two would indicate that it's helium, three lithium, four beryllium, and so on, all the way up until we get well past 100. So the protons determine what type of chemical element you have. Now, there are different types of each chemical element, and these differ by the number of neutrons that are inside the atom. And those are called isotopes. You may have heard this term before. Isotopes don't differ in the number of protons, but differ in the number of neutrons. So two isotopes are the same chemical element. One, both of them can have three protons, but one may have three neutrons, while another may have four neutrons. The difference in neutrons is what lets you know that this is an isotope. Something else to consider is that we can also alter the number of electrons that are present within an atom as well. This is called an ion. Ions differ in the number of electrons, and isotopes differ in the number of neutrons. But remember, if we change the number of protons, then well, that would change our chemical element. So there are several different things that you need to keep in mind when we talk about atomic structure. When atoms bond, they form molecules or compounds. We need to look and understand how chemical bonding can have an impact on the structure and the function of any particular compound or molecule. Electrons are involved in chemical bonding, and they can either donate or share depending upon the type of chemical bond that's present. Covalent bonds result from the sharing of electrons between different atoms to form a molecule. Here, we see that we have two atoms that are forming a covalent bond. They are sharing a pair of electrons. 
By sharing that pair of electrons, they form a chemical bond. That covalent bond bonds the two atoms together to form a molecule. So a covalent bond, remember, that is the sharing of electrons. There's also ionic bonding. And ionic bonding results from the donation of one electron of an atom to another forming a stable compound. The molecule on the left, which happens to be lithium, wants to donate that electron to the molecule on the or to the atom on the right, which is fluorine. Fluorine wants to gain an electron to be stable, and lithium wants to get rid of that electron to become stable. So by lithium giving that electron to fluorine, they form a chemical bond. That chemical bond allows them to become a compound, lithium fluoride. So we can see that ionic bonding results from the donation of one electron of one atom to another to form a chemical compound. So there is both covalent bonding and ionic bonding. Chemical reactions occur in the body all of the time. It's what allows us to be able to function. Without it, we would not be able to digest our food and gain the energy from it that's necessary for life. All the chemical reactions that occur within an organism, that's called a metabolism. You may have heard this term before. When somebody says that they have high metabolism, they can eat and eat and eat and never seem to gain a pound. I know a few people like that. Those people have high metabolism because they're able to efficiently use the chemicals in their body to produce energy. Chemical reactions, you have what, uh, something to start with and you have something you end with. What you start with is called the reactants and what you end with is called your products. So in a chemical reaction that you see on the right, we have hydrogen and oxygen as our reactants. That's what we're going to start our chemical reaction with. And at the end, you have your products, which are two water molecules. So we can see reactants are at the beginning and products are at the end. And that's where chemical reactions take place, starting with the reactants and ending with our products. As we can see here at the bottom with oxalic acid, this is a chemical formula and you will be seeing plenty of these. And we just want to make sure that you understand that subscripts for chemical formulas indicate the number of atoms that are present. So oxalic acid has eight atoms present in its chemical compound. Two hydrogens, two carbons, and four oxygens. Water, H2O, would have three atoms in its chemical compound because it has two hydrogens and one oxygen. Another thing to consider when we are looking at biology is the concept of acids and bases. Acids and bases are essential for the body because it allows us to maintain homeostasis. We don't want to, our bodies to get too acidic or too basic. That's very detrimental for chemical reactions to take place inside of our body. Acidic means that it has a pH below 7. This example of this would be stomach acid. Our stomach acid has a pH well below 1. Basic would have a pH above 7. Something that's very basic would be something like bleach. But the balance of acids and bases in our body is what allows us to maintain homeostasis. For example, blood pH must be between 7.38 and 7.42 for maximum efficiency in our bodies. It's very important that it stays between this because with, if it's not, that can cause severe harm to our bodies. So using acids and bases in our body to balance out the pH inside our bloodstream is extremely important for our body's success. We'll also be talking in this unit about organic molecules. And you may have heard of like organic foods or things like that, and it's somewhat similar. Organic simply refers to a molecule that contains the atom carbon. Carbon is the basis of all life that's found on Earth. All of the life forms that are present on Earth has carbon as a base atom within their bodies. So it's essential for life. Carbon can form up to four chemical bonds. And not very many atoms can say that. And that's what makes it special. That's what makes it unique is that it can form so many different chemical bonds. So we can see how carbon is essential for life, and organic molecules just simply refer to a molecule that contains the atom carbon. So hopefully you're able to understand a little bit more about the structure of atoms and compounds, differentiate between different types of chemical bonds that are present, and be able to define acids and bases and simply relate them to biology. 
Be sure to remember to take your video quiz and to take your mastery quiz at the end of this unit. We'll be exploring some more key concepts of this particular video lecture later on throughout the unit. Have a great day, guys. We'll talk to you later.